I try record. I'm just gonna we'll just get started, Gina, and if people join us then that's great. <clears throat> okay. So guys, um I am handing the reins over to the lovely Gina today. She's that way. <laughs> um, <We're not> <laughs> Gina, um, she works alongside me at the Soul Man and Friends. Gina um, does a lot of like the behind the scenes work with me, um, which is great. She's kind of like my little, um, I don't know, that little voice inside your head saying, have you done that? <laughs> 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 which is great, but... Gina also, sorry, posty. Can you just give me one wee second? I'm okay. Really, really sorry, guys. The problem when you're working from home. One <laughs> yeah, I, um, while Stephen's gone, I help um, Stephen uh, with the business, just making sure everything is running as it should. And he has, because he's spinning a lot of plates, I just... <laughs> Helping make sure that each plate is spinning. So, yeah. Hello. Hi. It's all right. We were talking about you behind your back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Did you explain what you do? Yeah. I did. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What Gina also has, though, is you'll see on her name there, Cobweb Moon Soul Chats. So Gina does a podcast every two weeks, is it Gina? It is every two weeks, yes. I'm not organised for it to be every week. And it's only a 10 minute podcast, which I love because, um, is it 10 minutes? It is 10 minutes. Yeah, between 10 and 15 minutes. We call it bite size. So you're, you're able to listen to these little bite size podcasts rather than, sit, I don't know if anybody's ever listened to a podcast before and you're there for an hour and a half like, oh my God. Whereas these are little bite-sized pieces and they're really cool because she's got lots of guest speakers and yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, I'll have um, Susan on in about four or five weeks. Susan who Watson, who was in the surgery yesterday and be on back on, on Fridays, isn't she? Monday and Fridays. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I've had Stephen. He ha was my first guest. <laughs> the Soul Chats with the Soul Man. <laughs> and then, and um, yeah, I... Next week we have Claire Arnold who does reflexology. So, and she's also on Stephen's mediumship course, which is where I met her because I'm also studi studying a mediumship diploma with Stephen. So we've been been doing it about eight nine months, and it's been amazing. Totally love it. So it's one of the best things I've ever done. So um, yeah, so I'm meeting lots of lots of really cool people. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Gina. Welcome. I'll give you a tenner for that wee plug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, well, you'll give me a crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so Gina is basically going to be leading today. She's going to be um, asking me lots of questions. And then what we'll do is at the end, um, maybe 30 minutes in, we'll, we'll put questions out to you guys and you can ask as much as you like. Hopefully we'll have a few more people joining us in the next 10, 15 minutes. But if not, and you're watching this as a, as a recording, you can still ask questions and we'll answer the questions as best we can. So over to you, Gina. Yeah. So hello, Stephen. So Stephen, you do many, many things. You spin a lot of plates. You have a lot going on. Um, you've got the shop, you've got the academy. But one thing you are known for, and you're starting um, new classes and sessions with tomorrow, actually, is meditation and mindfulness. Yes. Now, what exactly are they? Because a lot of people, um, and admittedly myself included a bit, think that they are very similar, possibly yes. the same thing. So what are they? Are they different? And if they are, what's so different about them? They are completely different. Meditation and mindfulness are two completely different things, but there is a bit of a crossover because there, there's similarities between the two of them. Okay. So the best way that I could describe it to you is that meditation is the, or mindfulness, we'll start with first because mindfulness is, is a better thing to talk about. So mindfulness 
as the the concentration of or the the awareness of a thing and meditation is the awareness of or the concentration of no thing okay so mindfulness do you mean that as in things as in physical things if your mindfulness or is it thoughts or is it all of that so if i was being mindful about this pen i'm right. focusing on the pen i'm focusing on the way the pen feels the texture of the pen the maybe the smell of the pen the mm. look of the pen how the pen writes all of that so when you're mindful you're mindful of a physical thing okay okay and your meditation you're 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 not focused on one thing okay okay yes yeah. so <laughs> it's it's almost like with uh, mindfulness you're focusing in and when you're at meditation you're just opening yourself out yeah absolutely because with, okay. with meditation what you're trying to do is you're trying to clear your mind yeah or clear your thoughts of things that may be intrusive so okay. you know but if i was taking someone through a guided meditation i would be thinking or i would be maybe talking about um so imagine yourself sitting under a bridge and as you sit under that bridge there's traffic zooming way past your head back and forth back and forth so you're not mindful of one thing you're mindful of something does that make sense okay does it make sense it does make sense but it does. It, i think i think it might help to understand if why why would you choose mindfulness for one at one time and meditation at another time what what's why what's the uses of each practice that so might you, help as well yeah yeah so mindfulness is it's very good for people who are um you know suffering from from something in the moment so it could be that they are feeling really down they're feeling um you know you might have woken up this morning just feeling like my <laughs> day's just not going to plan i think and that's every morning <laughs> <laughs> mindfulness is really good at just stopping you and and being there in that moment so you know if I was if I was um having a bad morning I could very simply just focus on my cup so I'm just feeling the cup under my fingers it feels warm it feels smooth it feels so by focusing your attention on that cup you're mindful of the cup rather than the problems that are going on in your life at that moment. Okay, okay. But meditation's much harder because with meditation, you're having to physically sit and put yourself into that meditative state. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. So, I get, so it would almost, for me, I'm trying to see it in, you, it, you would use mindfulness for very stressful situations but you would use meditation to when you were feeling a bit more relaxed so you could relax even more, but it would be very difficult to do meditation if you're up there with stress. So yep. mindfulness would probably be a useful tool to bring you down to meditation. Absolutely. That, would that be right? That, that's why there is a crossover because a lot of people use mindfulness techniques to facilitate meditation. Right, yes. I, I do actually that is a, exactly what I do I do um a process of imagining light coming down my body and as it does it relaxes all my muscles yeah and then I imagine it going down roots into the ground and then coming back up and then that's yeah so that would be mindfulness yeah because you're you're focusing on one thing at a time so when you're scanning down the body it's I'm aware of my forehead I'm aware of my eyes my jaw ears neck so that's a mindfulness body scan if that's right what you call it but it's also a form of meditation and that's the crossover right okay 
that makes sense. I'm sure it does make sense. <laughs> it absolutely does. Um, I think also a, a, a good way of facilitating meditation through mindfulness is using things that are very sensory. Um, so for instance, um, a really, really good thing that I used to do with people is ask them to bring in their electric toothbrush. And if they didn't have an electric toothbrush, um, bring in something that would vibrate or, you know, set their phone so it would vibrate. Right. I know it sounds crazy, but they would sit. <laughs> <laughs> we would have a clap because most people have electric toothbrushes. <laughs> and if they don't, um, we had people bringing in lady shavers. We had people bringing in their husband's, um, <laughs> you know, their shavers for their face. And they were basically just sitting in that, that vibration buzzing in their hands. It was just helping them to focus on that. Right. And bringing them down okay. and once their their energy was brought down they then were in a good place to meditate ah okay okay so what do what does that do um like physically because i imagine doing focusing on something um to bring your let your stress levels down you it must be having a real impact on your physical body yeah um so i'm guessing that that would help to reduce your heart rate and um i have to admit i don't know a huge amount how the body reacts in stressful situations i mean i know what it feels like <laughs> it feels like you're on fire at times yeah. but i imagine it's bringing it down because yeah i couldn't sit and meditate from a place of being really wired yeah after. yeah yeah okay i think it, it, it's taking the really simple things you know so um one i'm going to share with you what i do and it's something that i've always done before i meditate and i don't think i've ever shared it with anybody but i'm going to share it because i've got it in my oh. note here to share with you lovely great before i meditate i brush my teeth like actually brush your teeth i physically go and brush my teeth Okay. Because usually before I meditate in the morning, I've been really busy. Ah, my my yeah. brain's everywhere, all right? And I only meditate for 10 minutes a day. And yeah. That's it. Um, yeah. So what I do is I focus on, and see when I was writing this down, I was like, I actually do this. And this is the mindful part of what pushes me into meditation. So I, first of all, focus on the flavor of the toothpaste. Right. How does it feel okay. in my mouth? I then focus on the smell of the toothpaste coming through my nostrils. It's okay. crazy <laughs> because we all experience it, but we don't focus on these parts. It's crazy. Okay. The cooling sensation in my mouth. Then the way that the toothbrush moves across my teeth and gums. The okay. sound of the bristles moving backwards and forwards. The <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> no, um, it doesn't. It doesn't sound that mad, actually. <laughs> I focus but on... I think we're all sit, sitting here <laughs> visualizing you <laughs> brushing your teeth right now. <laughs> <laughs> I then focus on my reflection in the mirror, brush my teeth, and then I focus on the tingling sensation once it's done. Okay. And then you immediately go and meditate. Yeah. Absolutely, because that's it's, it brings me down. It's a, it's a really good way of calming yourself down. Um, I do the same with my little boy when he's feeling really stressed. I'm like, come on, let's go and brush your teeth. I have to say, I could not get my son to do that. <laughs> like, come on then, let's brush your teeth. No! <laughs> so major kudos to you for getting him to do that. <laughs> Again, though, there's 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 other techniques that you could use, you know, like um, holding your thumbs. I always say to, to Noah, like, right, grab my thumbs, and he'll grab my thumbs. I'm like, squeeze really tight. How do my thumbs feel in your fingers? He's like, good. <laughs> okay, now let go. How does that feel? Good. Squeeze tight. Uh, how does that feel? And uh, again, it's mindfulness. Because he's right. focusing on the thumbs, or he's focusing on those things. Um, trying to get him to meditate is probably not a good idea because he'd be like, no. <laughs> but the but mindfulness think, part is very good for him. Yeah, 
yeah that's really yeah that's really interesting that really so here's a here's a big question why should we meditate then it is mindfulness not enough why would we then need to meditate if mindfulness is bringing us down into a good place what's the point of meditation so mindfulness doesn't always keep you there it's a quick fix whereas meditation what it's doing is it's basically forcing you to focus on relaxation right Ten, just 10 minutes of relaxation I think they say that 10 minutes of relaxation don't quote me but 10 <laughs> minutes of relaxation is just as effective as eight hours sleep okay okay that's you know I I wouldn't dispute that I don't know if it feels like eight hours but when I do meditate because I'm sure like most people you get into a habit of it and then things happen in your life and it goes out the window and it's only when you start getting into dire straits you start thinking oh wait a minute <laughs> what did I do before that worked mm -hmm. but yeah so when I have meditated I have to admit yeah it does have a major impact on my ability to cope and how yeah. I feel about myself and everything so that yeah that would make sense to me I think for, for me when, when I very first started to meditate I was going through a really stressful time in my life and I was coming out of a relationship. It was a bad relationship. It wasn't good at all. Um, and I'd been practicing meditation to link with the spirit world for quite some time, for maybe five years, four or five years. And it, something clicked inside me thinking, that's where I get my calm. That's where I can get my peace through meditation. Mm -hmm. So I then started to meditate daily and it just helped me to disconnect. It just helped me to have this feeling of <sighs> centered. I'm here. I'm mm -hmm. present. I'm in the moment. Um, and there, there, I mean, there's many different kinds of meditation. I've listed a few there. So there's breath awareness. Yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask you, actually, because um, a lot of your, on your YouTube channel, it's very, it, um, the ones that I've mostly done have been visualization. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was going to, that was what I was going to ask. What are there many types and what are they? So you're brilliant. Yeah. So you've got visualization meditation, which is where you, you go on a bit of a journey in the mind. Um, which I think most people enjoy because it's taking you somewhere else. It's detaching <laughs> you from your life. Of course, yeah. it is. Um, there's also breath awareness meditation. So that's very much about like centering yourself and just being aware of the breath, just being aware of who you are, where you are. Um, there's also mantra based meditations where, you know, and you know, you've maybe heard of them, Buddhist monks use them, the Hinge Yorenge Kyo Hinge. I think, Yorenge. yeah, Deepak Chopra uses yeah. those a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's where I've done them. We're using his meditations, yeah. Yeah, or you've got the Oms and, you know, Om, Na, Ne, Pa, Ne, Hom, you know, all the mm -hmm. different chants. I'm, I'm laughing because Diane behind her's got the Tibetan flags which have Om, Ne, Pa, Ne, Hom on them. <laughs> um, <laughs> They should have anyway if you've got them up. Yeah, they do. That's fine. Just checking. <laughs> um, you've also got guided meditation as well. So that is when um, you're being guided to a certain place, which again kind of ties in with visualization meditation. Um, you have got kindness meditations. So it's all about loving yourself and being kind to yourself and really infusing the positive parts of you okay yeah okay. i am loving i am peaceful i am you know that i am meditations yeah so they're, they're called loving kindness meditations or kindness meditations or whatever they may be you also got things like walking meditation which is really really good if you've never done walking meditation um okay would that be like going for a walk like you know in a like b craig's country park or and just switching off or is yeah. it is there more involved no 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 
exactly the same kind of thing. So there's there's two different kinds of um, walking meditation. So you've got walking meditation where you take your shoes off, socks off, and you place your feet mindfully. So there's another crossover. Okay. Mindfully in the grass, feeling the grass, setting yourself, breathing, walking through the grass. And it's a really good feeling but you want to walk slowly and purposefully. Yeah. And there's the other part where you can be walking through the forest with your hiking boots and <laughs> doing exactly the same thing, but you need to be a little bit more focused, <laughs> obviously. Um, <laughs> so you don't walk into trees. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, um, so the walking meditations to me sounds like grounding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is yeah. just another form of grounding. Okay, okay, yeah. It's a wonderful thing. I like to do walking meditations in water and in, in bodies of running water. Um, okay. I was up well, in Glencoe a couple of years ago doing the West Highland Way, and when we got to Glencoe, I was walking in the water with my bare feet. Okay. Um, oh, that sounds nice, because I um, I like that's one of the reasons I like going up to the locks. Um, the kids and I get our wetsuits on and just go in the water. It's just, it's just really nice. It's just really nice. It does something that's just really beneficial. All those sort of negative ions and yes. fresh air and the water. But I never thought of it as a meditation before. But I guess actually, in a way, it is because your brain does go calms right down, it, yes. and you just mindfulness, I guess, as well. Yeah. Focusing on where you are. <laughs> so that's why people do get the two confused because they do cross over at points, you know, with if you're standing in the water, you're aware of the water. Yeah. So that's mindfulness. When you're taking the time to meditate in the water, then that's meditation. Right. They are very, very close. Very, very close. But they are. I so how I, I from what you've said, how I see it is mindfulness is the focus that allows you to enter meditation. It's almost like the the doorway into meditation. I would say so, yeah. Other people might argue that fact, but because um, mindfulness and meditation don't need to go together. Yeah. But okay. Mindfulness will always complement meditation, but meditation will not always complement mindfulness. Okay. And certainly when I'm, when I'm doing work with kids in the schools, it's very hard to get them to meditate, but it's very easy to have them being mindful. Actually, one of the meditations, the types of meditations you talked about, the love and kindness one, I thought immediately that that would be wonderful for kids. Perfect. But because um, it's a very simple um, thing to focus on and it's about them and making them feel good i am kind i am loving yeah um all those i ams i can imagine that being really good for children to focus on oh yes oh emma levin's work yes i am of that? course <laughs> thanks my hand yeah we have that book too <laughs> i was just thinking about all of emma's i ams when you were saying that so if, if anybody hasn't had a look at that book um, it's Emma Lavin. She is one of our friends. She's an author and she has got the little book of I Ams. Mm -hmm. You can get it on Amazon for four or five pounds, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, those I Ams would actually work really well in a loving kindness meditation. So that's, yeah. that's a good tool. So again, those, those are great for meditating with children, but then trying to get the children down to that place where you can say I am loving I am kind you know because when mm -hmm. a child's kicking off and you're like yeah. right, put your hands on your chest and say I am they're like I am pissed off <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing this <laughs> absolutely I am wanting a sandwich or you know, whatever <laughs> it's not going to work yeah. so that, that's where the whole mindfulness thing comes in um, and I've got a, a something that I take to the schools, it's called the Mediteddy. 
Um, so it's basically like a teddy bear that you can pose in meditation poses. Um, we're trying to develop that a wee bit though. It's one of the things that are on the back burner and we're trying to get a dragonfly teddy for the kids. Um, okay. When I'm out doing stuff with children and the, the dragonfly, we're, we're, we're trying to have it like a beanbag or a teddy so they can be mindful of this when I'm out with them. They can be touching its wings and we want the wings to be nice and silky so and maybe crumply so they're they're focusing on that and being mindful of the dragonfly um, mm -hmm. so yeah watch this space for that because i'm trying yeah to, no, that trying sounds to, great but, yeah it sounds very sensory yeah 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 might have glow up eyes too <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but we'll, 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 we'll figure that out <laughs> This massive dragonfly with loads of contraptions. <laughs> well, we're actually building a mascot. A mascot? Yeah, so my mum, we're, I'm going down a leafy lane, but I'm going to share it anyway, but my mum is um, a seamstress to trade. So my mum is helping me to construct our very own mascot, which is a dragonfly. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah, so we're going to have that mascot, hopefully, when we can like be normal people again. And we're going to have the mascot out in the street hugging people. And Yeah, I don't think people consider that normal, Stephen. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> we do, but a lot of other people don't. <laughs> do you know, do you know the hugging people. Oh, I long for that. <laughs> I know. The, the, the reason that I've done that though is I, I remember really clearly we were we'd hired a mascot we were out doing a, a meditation thing in Edinburgh and we'd hired this mascot and we were working with the kids and it's a shame because the girl that was in the mascot suit we, we actually forgot that she needed to have like little breaks and like take drinks of water because it's very hot inside these suits anyway so uh, she's like working with us with the kids um and at the end of it all the kids wanted to hug her every single child wanted to hug her in the suit and it just really inspired me to want to do that and have our own mascot so that we could do that with kids yeah um, so yeah i think that's a really lovely idea i yeah. think yeah i can see that and yeah. it wasn't just the kids it was adults as well they were like oh, give me give me a hug <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're going to nilly feeling with that, but I just thought that I would share that. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, we are now at uh, ten o'clock. So, would you? Are you? Would you like to open up to questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Great. So does anyone have any questions? Please take yourself um, off mute and ask away. We'd love to hear it. Or you can type as well if you want to. If you don't want to ask questions, you can type in the chat box as well. <laughs> I feel like I should have questions, but as I've been listening and, and writing, I've written loads of notes actually this morning. Oh, good. Thanks. Some fabulous ideas there, yeah, and it does help to think a wee bit more about what the difference is between mindfulness, because you keep, keep saying mindfulness and meditation are two different things, but in my head I was thinking I can't really separate them, so that was quite good to listen to how they, they are, they're interconnected, but they are different as well. Yeah, so, yeah. mindfulness is the, the concentration of a thing. Uh -huh. meditation is the concentration of nothing yeah so for kids probably the mindfulness is going to be more effective than trying to get them to do a meditation yeah especially at first yeah Absolutely. what about the sensory thing and you, you, you can do it with kids in, in really simple ways you know like so um, we're doing something with my little boy today and we're, we're making cups we're just getting a cup with some tissue paper taping the tissue paper around, putting dragon eyes on the cup and he blows through the cup. Ah. He's mm. mindfully aware of the cup, but he's also very aware of his breathing. So and you've got the, the little things on the cup that do that. 
Yeah. It's just a really it's good way of centering children. Because I think if we can if we can help children to be aware of breath, first of all, everything's possible. Yeah. yeah. My daughter has um, eczema, so um, we do a lot of breathing techniques to try and calm her down because obviously the eczema always flares up when she's anxious and mm -hmm. um, not coping. And one of the ones I that she likes best actually is the balloon one where you imagine you're blowing up a big balloon and then yeah. she likes to then let it go and imagine it <laughs> whisking around the room. Um, but yeah, she has to do do the, there's quite, there's quite a lot actually that are really helpful, but I am, um, I use them myself now. They were, we, we learned about them for her, but now I use them myself because they're, they're brilliant. <laughs> Another good one for adults and children, actually, both is, um, I normally do it with children, but I get them to put the Medi Teddy on their tummy and they just want to focus on pushing the, t the teddy bear up and down. And I do it with adults with cushions. So I just put a cushion on everybody's belly and I say, okay, so breathe in, bring the cushion up, breathe out, bring the cushion down, up, cushion down cushion so it's just a great way yeah, um, yeah there's um there are breathing techniques that i've done but through yoga where you breathe in and you hold your nose and you breathe out through the other nostril and things things like that that which are meant to have some impact in you some positive impact i wish i knew exactly what but um the but I found them quite useful, the whole thing of holding your breath. And yeah. I, I, I don't know about if anyone else finds that, but I find if I hold my breath for a few seconds, I feel like a rush of something over me as I yeah. breathe out. And that, that can, I guess that's mindfulness because then that pulls me away from where I was into that's where I am, you know, brings me back into my body. What, what I've been doing as well more recently over the last three years is I've been doing the Wim Hof um, meditation technique. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You ever heard no. of Wim Hof? No, I haven't, no. Um, well, so what what is, that? is that? So Wim Hof is, um, he's the Iceman. You can Google him, you can you can go and search him. Um, but I, I've kind of got to this point where my meditation had plateaued a wee bit I'm sure everybody feels like that you know things start to plateau and you want something different so I started to look into Wim Hof and Wim Hof he's all about cold water immersion um, and he's all about yes I have Emma Levin actually has been telling me about that so yes I apologize I do I have heard of him yeah no, it's just amazing so you can you can watch his stuff but basically the Wim Hof technique is you take in as many deep breaths as you can for 60 seconds. Right. And then once you take in that last breath, you <gasps> hold your breath. And I can hold my breath for three and a half minutes now doing that. Wow. Um, honestly, you'd be amazed because you're, 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 no, you're not. So you're oxygenating your body and then you <sighs> breathe out and then hold. And you hold for that amount of time, but during the time you're holding, your body starts to tingle. So everything inside your body, there's this just psychedelic, amazing feeling where, and you can actually feel your central nervous system activating and firing off and doing amazing things. And then after you finish that, big deep breath in and hold your deep breath and then it bursts it's like fireworks inside your body it's just the most amazing thing it takes lots of practice to get it to that point where you're feeling tingly and mm -hmm. um, but I've got it to that point and to be honest sometimes I do it and I don't get anything sometimes I do it and I get lots um, but it's wonderful Okay, I'm going to look into that. Sounds great. I'm also thinking in my head we're going to have we should have uh, breath holding competitions. 
you, you, you can actually do it. You can, um, if you download the Wim Hof app. Okay. Oh, has an app. Right. Okay. I'm right. writing this down, actually. And it's okay. a free app as well. Um, and it's really, really good. It, it basically just checks your, your, or it shows you your progression over a period of time. So I suppose it's, it's, anybody could do it, but I think people who are used to meditation, who, who have done meditation before, I think it's a really good thing for them to, to maybe look into. Okay, that's really, you were saying it, um, cold water body immersion, is that, that part of it, to get into cold water and do breathing? Or... Yeah, so you can, you can start that straight away if you want. I have a cold shower every night every single night before bed <laughs> no <laughs> no thanks <laughs> but there's, there's that um when it feels uncomfortable so you're 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 stepping into something that feels uncomfortable so it's challenging you it's changing yeah. you. yeah 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 <laughs> especially in the middle of winter <laughs> yeah so when when you when you do that what you're doing is you're dropping your body temperature don't know right. if you know this but to be able to sleep properly your body temperature needs to drop did you know this um yes in the sense that we have a cold room bedroom at night yeah because, uh, yeah but i didn't know that about the shower okay yeah. so we'll, we'll, i will probably speak more to that um to donna about that tomorrow i'm going to actually make a note there speak to donna about temperature mm -hmm. drop um, so it actually helps you and aids a restful night's sleep when you can drop your body temperature. Okay. I did not know this until I started my cold water immersion. Um, but what, I'm, what I also love to do as well is get into bodies of cold water. So, um, for instance, going up the Pentland Hills to the reservoir up the top there and just mm -hmm. stepping into the water and just immersing myself right to my jaw. Mm -hmm. and if I'm brave enough I'll pop my head in but before I go into the water I'm <laughs> so you're charging your body mm -hmm. and it makes it much easier to go into water cold water you see I don't mind getting into bodies of cold water but <laughs> a cold shower just <laughs> I can't get my head around that I'm going to be totally honest <laughs> <laughs> But I'll happily get into, um, you know, in a lock or get into, you know, um, deep pools in a river. That's that's not a problem at all. Yeah. I have seen that you do that, though, Gina. You and Richard and the kids just jump into to the freezing cold water with yeah. wet boots on, though. Come on. They're teeny and we're in Scotland. <laughs> So get the wetsuit off. <laughs> you're always miles from an in anywhere warm when you're in Scotland as well, and you're doing these things. <laughs> They're never on your doorstep. <laughs> you need to do it safely, of course. You know, I'm not saying go and jump into your local reservoir. Yeah. That's my disclaimer. Please do not go and jump into your local yeah. reservoir. Do your research, ask online, and if you're unsure, there are um, outdoor swimming groups who have uh, lots of information on what's safe and not safe, actually. Yeah. There's wild swimming, it tends to be called. Yeah, there's a, there's actually a swimming group that meets down at um, South Queen's Ferry, mm -hmm. and they swim back and forward over the fourth. Did you know this? I didn't know that, no. Many, many people who swim every day in the fourth across the Fife and back crazy well, i've done the loony duke a couple of times at South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> that's cold <laughs> yeah. we're definitely going down a leafy lane with the whole cold water immersion aren't we but yes we it, are but it is related because it is back it is about changing your mindset in um and it is a meditative thing to do so yeah. not too leafy lane I, I truly believe that, see, through meditation, I can achieve anything in my life. Before before I do anything that feels uncomfortable, I always centre myself. Right, where do I want to be? What do I want to do with this? You know, so there's there's lots and lots and lots going on in my mind. And I have to, sometimes I'll do a recording on my phone of myself, you know, the little voice recorder thing. And I'll write down what is it that I want to achieve. So 
Um, other people's voices annoy me in meditation videos because they're mainly like American and it's too like, hey, everybody, we're here for this amazing transformational meditation. And, you know, it's great, but sometimes it's too airy-fairy. Um, and I like it to be, so this is a meditation to help you to focus your mind. I like it to be like that. Um, so usually I'll record my own voice, which used to irritate me. <laughs> Doesn't so much now. Um, but I'll sit and meditate to my own stuff to, to help center me. Um, and I, I, I think that if I can do that, even just a 10 minute body scan meditation before I go into any situation, any stressful situation, or before I have to do any kind of decision making, it just helps me find clarity. Well, one of, cause I'm obviously doing the um, mediumship with you, Stephen, and um, we do a lot of meditation in that mm -hmm. to, um, open ourselves up and what I find interesting is now I'm finding meditation to actually raise my vibration which yeah. is a whole new level of something that I didn't I wasn't aware I was possible mm -hmm. obviously now I've been doing it for a few months so I'm aware that it is possible but that's another aspect of meditation that it doesn't always have to be about um about calming yourself down to sleep as you say you do it before big situations it can also be used to sort of rev yourself up get yourself crystal clear in your mind about what you want yeah, um, yeah so it's it, so in that sense meditation can be used for anything you need it for basically absolutely I'm just, I'm just looking at the, the comments box here. Angela's saying with the first lockdown and your help, Stephen, with meditation, I made some changes to my life and started driving lessons, started college, but you hate your voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing though, Angela. That is. That is, yeah. That's exactly what I was saying. Yeah, it can just focus you completely. Yeah, it doesn't have... Because I think that's another... Um, a misgiving about meditation often people think it's just for going to bed at night it's just for going to sleep but it's really not it's it's you use it as a tool to achieve what you want in life to help you have more focus and clarity and a better understanding of yourself um and i think to truly understand that you have to do it <laughs> Yeah, it can't, it's one of these things that people can explain to you the benefits, but until you actually do it yourself, you don't, you won't truly understand. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think what bothers me is, um, well, it doesn't bother me so much anymore because I think we've kind of changed the image of meditation is for such a long time, so many people thought that meditation was, you know, um, wearing orange robes, sitting in a room, with candles and have to be in a zen yeah. cloud somewhere and it's the very opposite of that um you know i've done meditation with people sitting in their car you know i'm, I'm the passenger in someone's car and be like right okay so how are you feeling about this situation oh i'm really stressed you know with my old work colleagues they would be like oh i'm so stressed i'm like right let's just sit for a minute and center ourselves and it was when i worked for um and a weight loss organization would be going into big managers meetings and everybody was so stressed because there was so much pressure and I would be sitting in my mate's Land Rover, <laughs> the four of us, and I'm like, right, let's just chill. What I want you to do is focus on your breath, focus on your breathing. What do you see when you walk into that room? You're going to see the managers, you're going to see tables you're gonna you're gonna see where you want to sit and i want you to see yourself going through that day having positive conversations with people when you feel stressed or irritated just remember to breathe you know so talking and and almost forecasting what's going to happen in that day you're, you're, you're programming your mind to think very differently when you're in the scenario or the situation. 
Um, because if you just walk in, it's like, ah, it's like chaos. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I... I totally agree. I actually um, used it before a job interview a couple of years ago and I got the job, which was great, but it took me, I did it in a coffee shop on Lothian Road in Edinburgh, <laughs> <laughs> sitting there with, with my cup of tea, just zoning out and bringing myself down. But, um, and that's the first time I had used it in that way. And it was, it was just astounding how it took me from that shaky you know can barely breathe state into like you know i you know where you you have the pep talk i deserve to be here I, this is an opportunity and you know and brought me right down and so when i walked into the interview room i was myself you know my relaxed as much as i could be at that time but happy self mm -hmm. rather than about half an hour before i'd been jittery and you know tripping up over my feet because i my brain was just shooting off in all directions so um that yeah so i um it makes a lot of sense to me as you were saying sitting in the car bringing everyone down into that yeah. place before they go into the meeting because yeah it's there was an interesting study that was done um, and i don't i'm not sure when it was i can't i can't don't quote me on when it was but what they've done is way back i think it was in the 70s the um they got a group of athletes and they plugged them up to neural, what are they called? I don't know what they're called, but the, you know, the neural thingies that, that connect to okay. your brain. Yeah. Um, they, sure. Yeah. They, connect they monitor um, what's going on, the electric connections in their brains. Yeah. They also would that, connect would that be right? to okay. each of their muscles, their major muscle groups, and they got them to right. virtually run a race in their mind. Um, or row a boat or whatever whatever the athlete's um, chosen sport was, they got them to visualise themselves crossing the finishing line, visualise themselves running, um, visualise themselves being in that race. And it is a form of meditation because they were visualising um, not on one thing, they were visualising on something you know the, the 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 bigger picture um so be a bit of mindfulness and meditation mixed but what was happening with the athletes is the muscle groups were firing off the same way that they would as if they were running the race wow it's crazy <laughs> um the mind the 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 mind the 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 electrical activity or the thought activity that was going on in their mind it was going crazy haywire because they were seeing themselves winning the race um, and it's actually still done to this day wow. coaches that work and diane works with them um, she'll she'll get this but coaches that work with athletes they ask their students to visualize themselves being successful um, and that's why athletes are so successful. I was just yeah. going to add there, when uh, I was at an Olympic hopefuls camp, which was all like um, up and coming Olympians um, down in London. And it was one day we were out for a walk with the, with the skaters and there was these guys lying on the ground and they were like literally shaking and they were bending to the side and bending to the side and shaking and bending to the side. And I thought, what the heck's going on here then? I realized it was actually the guys that were doing the luge and they were actually visualizing the race. So they were, that's why they were all on the ground doing this whole shaking thing as if they were on the ledge or whatever it is they call it that they use. Um, but there's, hard, there's, there's virtually no sports now that don't use visualization. So yeah. important. I use it every single day that I work with the skaters and from personal experience, I know the difference it makes if they have, are trying to do a new skill and they visualize it, it's it's like the um the bot the mind sees it, but the body actually can feel it as if you're virtually doing it. So it it's like muscle memory. The more they visualize it, the more they can actually achieve the skill. So it's it's I've seen it firsthand. It's amazing, really amazing the difference it makes. So something that I've done for the last five years since I or, or since I've been like working with clients with Reiki, um. 
is what I'll say to them is before we start this session, what is it that you want to achieve from it? And I want you to be writing your thoughts down because they have, um, you know, got maybe five or six sheets that they, they fill in before they, they, they do their Reiki. So they write down there something like, um, I want to feel less stressed. So rather than just looking at that and, and going into that, what I'll have like a wee five minute consultation with someone and say, and usually I'm doing stuff that's one-to-one -one with people. I've got lots of clients where I'm just having them in after the shop shut and we're doing one-to-one -one stuff and they've been through difficult times. And I'll say to them, so I see here that you want to feel less stressed. What, what does that mean to you? Right, okay, so I'm really stressed at work now. And then they, they, everybody seems to just throw all their stuff at me, which is great because I can deal with that. And I'm like, so what I want you to do is I want you just to be thinking about the stresses at your work. And when we go through, before I start your Reiki, I'm just going to take you through a 10-minute meditation. And almost everybody always says, I've tried to meditate and I can't do it. Or they'll say, yeah. I meditate every night. All right, okay. I've got this sleep app and it sits beside my bed and I listen to that and it takes me to sleep. I'm like, that's no, that's meditation, but it's not the meditation that I want. It's not focused meditation that's going to help you. So what we do is we have them lying on the bed and then I do a body scan with them, usually from their feet up because it, it distorts them a wee bit when you take them from their feet up. And then I'll say, so I want you to visualize your workplace and I want you to see yourself walking in the doors smiling hi how are you I want you to see the people that would usually irritate you and I want you to intentionally say nice things you look really nice today your hair is really nice <laughs> and it might feel unnatural but I want you to focus on how it feels to give people compliments and they're really feeling it as they're going through it in the meditation. And I want you to visualize yourself having a wonderful day at work and walking away feeling like I have accomplished something here today. And honestly, see the difference that it makes to people. What people are doing now is they say to me, I'm coming for Reiki, but are you doing the meditation bit? <laughs> Um, and it's great because they're then able to take that practice into their lives and able to change things um, I've got a client that I'm working with just now who's gone through quite a tough time and obviously COVID's came and we're in lockdown for four weeks in West Lothian so it's harder for them so what I've done is I've recorded a couple of meditation videos unlisted on YouTube that they can tap into that are bespoke for them in their situation um, so it's like I've asked them tell me what it is that's bothering you right now okay so it's been stuck in the house with my family right so let's view this differently so I want you to see yourself waking up in the morning make your wife a coffee tell her you love her honestly Three days in, <laughs> his wife sent me a message saying, what have you done to my husband? <laughs> <laughs> He's like a different man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. But it's that whole visualising and helping to take people somewhere. It's just a wonderful thing. Really, yeah, really is. Because you're, if your brain doesn't understand what's actually happening and what you're thinking. You think everything is the truth to it. Yeah. So, yeah, so you might as well think good things. <laughs> yeah, it's much easier to, to go into work and be pissed off and be angry, you know. Um, but just changing that thinking and that thought, what a difference it makes. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge, huge, huge difference because people are then able to visualise their day ahead of them rather than thinking, oh, my God, what's coming? Yes, yeah. What I think in your day that might cause you stress today, Gina? <laughs> many, many things. No. <laughs> but that's, I, want to, yeah. I want you to think about those things and think, how are you going to react? And, and it's just another good way mm -hmm. of visualizing through meditation. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I totally, I totally agree. It's meditation is so important. I actually have, um, well, our, the spare room in our house I've made into my meditation space because we can't have anyone stay over. I might as well claim the space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a silver line into COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, because um, I realized that I needed, needed that space something that I can just go to so um it's yeah it's it's if you use meditation regularly it does it has it can change your life completely and mindfulness absolutely and I think there's that whole meditation for everybody but there's also that like individual approach like what I'm speaking about there you know that is something that I'm going to incorporate or have already incorporated into our um, meditation online portal, you know, our, our weekly class. Yeah. And that is, I want you to visualize a stressful day. And now we're going to reprogram that stressful day. And I want you to visualize yourself walking into your work. I want you to visualize yourself, or it could be your home, so it kind of, it's like one size fits all. Yeah. And it's really good because people can access it on their phone. They could have it on their Bluetooth in their car and they're still able to drive and visualize whilst they're driving, you know, because it's not going to take them to an altered state. Okay. Okay. It's helping them focus on their breath, their breathing. Um, it's making everything much more accessible. Or they could sit in their car and go... set this up, set my day up for work or whatever it may be. So yes, your meditation classes, so they start tomorrow and what exactly do people get when they, um, when they book in? So basically when they book or subscribe, because we've got a subscription there as well, I do believe that I need to fix, there's, there's, some, there's a glitch because there's a few people message saying that they're trying to book that and they're not able to book it, it just keeps knocking them off. So Yeah, makes... I had a look at that and I couldn't get into it either. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to look at that and try and fix the payment gateway, I don't know what's went on there, but basically um, what they'll do is they'll log on and there is four different boxes on the screen it's, it's really really simple and easy to use um, they go into the soul man and friends academy they click on meditation classes they'll then put in their password which they'll get once they've um, paid their weekly fee or their subscription or whatever it may be and what they'll get is these four boxes and these four boxes it could be anxiety and stress um, or one of them is setting up a good day at work so that's the first one. The other one is a body scan meditation, which is one that we've had up for a wee while. Um, the other one is meditation for kids. And then the other one is one that I'm going to be recording today. And I've not quite decided what I'm going to put into that. Um, but the, the purpose of it is that we build up a library so that people are able to then, you know, anxiety at work and then have maybe two or three meditations under that. And then you know, the meditation for kids have two or three meditations under that. So we're just able to connect into each portal, if you like. It just makes it really easy, but easy and accessible for people. And there will also be a lesson as well every week. Um, and it will be a recorded lesson or a live lesson. We'll, we'll maybe do a wee bit of both. Um, we'll have like, right, we're going to be live at nine o'clock. Um, here's the link, join us if you want to, or we will have it recorded and set up so that people can watch that lesson and be like, oh, right, okay, so that's the best way to meditate. Um, we'll have it so that there's there's commonly answer, asked questions, things like, I like to meditate, or I would like to meditate, but I kind of get my mind to, to relax. Brilliant, we'll answer that in this lesson. So those type of things. Um, there'll also be links at the bottom of the page as well. And we've got links for um, discount codes for um, in-person meditation as well. So if you're, if you're part of the online training um, or the online meditation classes, 
there'll be a little code down the bottom so that you can book in at the shop when the in-person meditations come back so that you're not paying like double. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, okay. So, some, yeah, some people might want to pay in person for the meditation classes in person alone. Mm -hmm. But if they're already doing the online classes, it means that they'll be able to come in because that might not always be there. It might be other people facilitating the classes because I've got 12 meditation teachers now. <laughs> um, so it might be one of the meditation teachers taking a class and then they can look and say, oh, they're part of the okay. meditations. Okay, so then um, people booking to the online meditation classes will then um, get access to the in-person ones at a discount and they'll have access to both. So that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. It's a lot of work, but we're getting there. <laughs> we are. Yeah. It's I'm, coming I'm along. to go out to Aldi with Debbie to deliver these 21 days of kindness as well. So it's like, I've got so much going on today. My wife's like, when do we get to spend time together? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you're only doing these Monday to Friday, because at one point you're going to do them every day. Yeah. And we thought that was a, not a great idea for family life. <laughs> There's a meditation for that, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're a wee bit over time. We're four minutes over, but that's that's not a bad thing. Oh, it's been great. I've really enjoyed chatting to you about this. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah, I've taken tons of notes. By the way, I, I'm surprised at how many notes I've taken from oh, really? both of you. Oh. Yeah, from, from what both of you have said. Very interesting. Yeah. Great. That's great. Thank well, you. tomorrow we've got. Donna Fairley, um, sleep behavioural specialist is her yeah. title. Yeah, and she is a she's a registered nurse, and she also um, is a CBT practitioner. Yeah, and she specialises in sleep behaviour, and um, will well, she'll be able to tell you all about it tomorrow, won't she? Yeah, I'm, I am quite excited for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a really different. Um, session because a lot of people do struggle with sleep yeah um, and I know that Donna does do meditation as well so um that's just going to complement everything it's interesting how everything's interlinking because you know what we we're speaking about yesterday with Susan there's lots of similarities with the stuff that Susan's doing the mindfulness that I do connects with the the science-based stuff that Susan does and then equally I think that's going to linking beautifully to what Donna does so yeah brilliant great okay That's thank up. you everyone yeah thank you everybody thank you see you both bye okay. thanks take care bye, bye. <laughs> yeah it's just us <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that way? Well. <laughs>